The next part here is about predictions in the ordinary and weighted least squares models. So what we have to do is basically, if we want to minimize the squared prediction error, then the expected, expected mean of y given the predictors is the optimal predictor. Or we call it the conditional expectation is the optimal predictor. In the case where we know the parameters, so the parameters are given somehow with no uncertainty, it's fairly easy given a model to make the prediction because we have the observations and that's x and theta plus epsilon. So in this case, it's fairly easy. Let's put some indices on here. So in this case, it's easy to predict if we know theta and if we know the predictors here, the only uncertainty comes from the epsilon. Thus, what we have here is the predicted at that particular time, t plus l that we want to make the prediction. We just have to pick the corresponding x for that time point. And then we have the prediction, as I said, the only uncertainty comes from the epsilon out there. So that's an easy one. Now, if we look at the case where we estimated parameters, so what we have here is that we have a hat on that theta. That means we also have the variance on the th estimate of theta as before. Again, the expectation of y t plus l hat is the predictor at that time multiplied on a transpose on theta hat. So that's, this, you can say, very transparent. But the uncertainty now includes two parts. So the variance of what we have here of y t t plus l minus y hat t plus l to have the same notation is the variance and now we just plug in what we have it's the variance of well, the true observation, yt plus 1, which is, let me just, ref so the true observation is xt plus l transpose on theta, the true value of theta, plus epsilon t, minus our predicted value that we have right there. So that's minus x transpose theta hat. So that's the variance that we want to look at. And that should be x t plus l, and that's also t plus l. OK. So what can we do about this? Let's continue looking at this. First of all, the future epsilon here is independent of all the previous epsilons. So we can take that out, say it's the variance of epsilon t plus l. Put it our way, the uncertainty from the estimate of theta at time t is independent of epsilon in the future. So what we have more is then plus the variance of this here. So what we have is x t plus l transpose on theta minus theta hat, which equals, now the first part here is just sigma square plus, and now when we have a constant that we multiply on something where we have a random variable here, we have to take that constant outside, and then we have it as x t plus l, transpose on the variance of theta minus theta hat. And then we have the transpose on the back here, like that. And now, what was the estimator that we have for the uncertainty of sigma here? Uh, uncertainty, a variance on theta. We have sigma hat here. Then we have x t plus l transpose. What we have in here is the uh, lowercase sigma square. Let's put that outside in front. So we have 1 plus 
this, and then we have an x transpose x inverse from the variance, and then we have x t plus l, like this. Now remember this x transpose x, those are the all the observations up to time t that we have as rows in that matrix. So that's the design matrix that we used to estimate theta hat. So this is the duration of the variance when you do predictions. So one of the things that is important to just think of here is what does this mean in the usual sense? If you've done linear regressions models before, what you used to see is that you have some data doing something, then you make an estimate like this, and then when you look at the confidence interval for the line of prediction error, then you have typically some trumpet shape here. And that's exactly what you get here. You have a level that comes from sigma square here, and then you have something that comes from your design matrix, and then you pre and post multiply by how far you are away from the mean value in the univariate case here. And that, that you have a square part here, so therefore you have a second order parabola going away from your expected values. So that's how that links back to what you've seen in ordinary least squares and linear regression models. That is this prediction part here. Now, in often what we want to do is also to get a prediction interval. And what we do here is that we look at the predicted value. We have the variance estimator or the standard the square root of that. That gives a standard deviation of that. And then we have to multiply by a quantile in some distribution that represents our estimates. In practice, our parameters are based on a number of observations, so we should look in a t distribution with n minus p degrees of freedom, and that's what we do. And then you can say when n minus p is sufficiently large, then you can start using the normal distribution instead, if you like. But on the other hand, nowadays, it's so easy to look up in t distribution, so why not just always do that? Except that it, n is very large. You need to get up to at least 100 or so, then you can say the difference is marginal. So to sum up, what have we looked at during this lecture? We look at, well, if the residues are identically distributed and independent, sorry, independent and identically distributed, then the variance can be estimated as the inner product of the epsilons known by the number of degrees of freedom for the residuals, that is the number of observations minus the number of parameters that you estimated. You have the ordinary least squares estimator as x transpose x inverse x transpose y. We can also go to the weighted least squares where we have an assumption that we have a covariance matrix on top of just that is different from just the identity. And then you have the sigma inverse uh, placed in the similar equation for two places. And if we follow the identity matrix, it this the ordinary least squares is a subcase of the weighted least squares estimator. If we use maximum likelihood, then we get to the same estimator as for the weighted least square, so that's good for the estimator, but the estimator of sigma hat square is a little bit large, uh, smaller in the m likelihood case, so it has a little small bias because we divide it by n instead of n minus p, that is the usual denominator. So finally, the conditional expectation is the optimal predictor, and when you do the predictions, you have to take care of the uncertainty that comes from the parameters. At least in practice, you don't know what the true values are, so that's what you have to do. That was all for now. See you back later. Bye.